Hi guys, my name is Jacqueline Walker. I teach at Ventura College and I'm really excited to be in this class. I've done a few workshops with Reading and Apprenticeship and they're really fun and I learn a lot and it really helps me to slow down with um, reflecting on my own process as a reader and then bringing that into the classroom to help with other people who are learning to enjoy reading and learning to read in a critical way that we do in college. So um, I have the questions up so I can kind of stay on track. But um, thank you for everyone who posted already. Reading through your responses really got me thinking about the choices that I've been making as an instructor and ways that I can grow and expand. So, um, so here we go. Um, the first question, what kind of text do students need to understand to do well in your classes? Um, well, so I've been teaching for, um, at Ventura College for the last 10 years. And the longer I've been teaching, the more I've been weaving in textbooks that, um, or excuse me, books that are not textbooks. I find that textbooks are often hard to teach students reading from, um, unless they're actually stories or narratives or short essays or something like that. So a lot of the theory gets a little jumbly for students. So I am using They Say, I Say by Graf and Birkenstein, but the, the books that I find myself using to help students enjoy reading and writing are books by Natalie Goldberg. Uh, one of them that I'm using this semester is called Writing Down the Bones. It's her first book. And uh, as a Zen pr practitioner, she talks about that kind of experience of being a meditator and how it influences her writing, how it helps her to slow down and um, be more observant and weave that into her writing. So students seem to be responding well to it. She's funny and um, she makes the writing process seem like an enjoyable thing to do that you can get better at with practice and time and effort. And so um, I'm also using another one of her books in another class called Wild Mind, which is really great. It's got the same similar structure. It's like short little narrative essays about her life as a writer. And then, um, yeah, so and then she also wrote True Secret of Writing, which I'm using in my creative writing class because I find that that piece for her is a very structured, organized way of being a writer. And so creative writers enjoy that process that she shares. So yeah, so um, I guess my point is that um, the to teach reading specifically, I really want to find texts or readings that are thought provoking and interesting and filled with narrative and detail. Um, sometimes if they're too jargony, students get overwhelmed, and um, there's a time and a place for that. For my English VO1A, I intentionally weave in um, Henry David Thoreau's Civil Disobedience, a chunk of it, and it's difficult to read, and we have to navigate it together, but it's fun because that's where the reading and writing strategies come in. So as far as um, question number three, what, if any, strategies have you tried to help students with these issues and how have they worked? I feel like working on reading and writing strategies in composition classes and even creative writing classes is the foundation for our learning as writers and readers, is observing what other writers are doing and then using these strategies to connect and delve deeper into the craft of writing. So um, annotating we do a lot of, we do a lot of out loud reading, I'll annotate and um, read out loud on the projector so students can kind of see my process. You know, this semester I accidentally photocopied a reading of Martha C. Nussbaum's Human Capabilities, which is also pretty dense and tricky. She does a lot of um, legal writing um, for civil rights, global civil rights, and so it's very jargony and difficult for students to get through initially. And so I accidentally gave them my copy with notes on it, and I thought, oh great, now they have my notes, and they can kind of see my how my mind works when I'm connecting with a piece. So oftentimes we'll just go over you know, we'll start with a, a textbook and we'll just spend, or a book that we're reading and we'll just slow down and spend time looking at the front and the back of the book and opening the book up and looking at the dedication and looking at when it was published and paying attention to how many editions or how many publications it has and those things that we might miss as readers if we're not paying attention that actually contribute to the whole feeling of the book. Um, you know, the dedication is often a beautiful thing. Looking at the table of contents and, and figuring out how the writer is structuring their writing. One thing that Natalie Goldberg talks a lot about in her writing that I've adopted in my classes is helping students understand that when they're reading a piece of literature or any kind of text, what they're doing is they're studying a writer's mind. 
And so how does the writer's mind organize ideas? And so a table of contents will show you how they're organizing their thoughts by topics or subtopics or headings. And those are things that we notice as good readers. We notice when there's something in bold or something in italics or if there's jargony words that we don't understand, we underline or highlight or circle those and then we discuss those things. So it's slow and somewhat painstaking at times, but that's a good thing because, you know, that's what intellectual thinkers do. They, they uh, you know, analyze something to the point of exhaustion so they can extract, they can step back from it and then extract a deeper meaning behind it. And so... Those are some of the strategies. I'm willing to try anything, so I'm excited to see what other people are doing with strategies because, you know, they take time in the classroom, but they're definitely worth, you know, the time that they take to set up that foundation for how we're going to read and write over the semester. Um, let's see. What do you hope to gain from taking this course? I enjoy collaborating and seeing what other people are doing. It, it, I find it inspiring to get ideas from people and figure out how to weave them into what I'm doing. Um, my fears are like pretty much everyone else's. I know Emily mentioned the fear of like, you know, and a few other people about time management with the course and being able to get the work done and having a child, she said having a toddler and just being able to find that balance. But I know that just like any other course or intellectual endeavor, a little, a little bit of time and effort goes a long way. So, um, so as far as describing the challenges that I think students are having, understanding the texts um, in their courses, I think the one thing that I learned in graduate school that's kind of carried with me is this idea of James G's discourse communities. Really understanding that language, you know, is and literacy with a capital L is not just being able to read a book, it's being able to read your environment, being able to um, navigate in different environments, the way that you speak, the way that you dress, the way that you engage with other people, the socialization process is really a process of literacy and so stepping back with students I try to remember that I try to remember to talk about it with students because for me it comes so naturally I, I know when I'm navigating in new spaces and I know the kind of um, tools that I need to navigate certain spaces and so just making that transparent with students and talking about all the ways in which they're literate if they take the public transportation system that's a form of literacy being able to navigate through town um, on public transportation and if you're a football fan being able to be literate in the game of football. So I try to focus with students on fleshing out the ways that they're, that they're literate because I think that students often have this idea of being literate or being well read as like you have to have read several books. And I know a lot of students, especially those in my developmental courses, that have never read an entire book. And so when we talk about their, their um, I call it a literacy timeline. So we'll get the, the journal, our, our, our journals out and we'll just write a timeline and we'll plug in events in our lives that have connected us to words, to reading, to poems, to whatever kind of experience we have with language and we'll plug those experiences on there and we'll do the same thing with writing so we can see like um, you know what our foundation has been and what we want to work towards in the future and so um, I think students are frightened by the idea of reading sometimes because it's overwhelming you feel like you have to be smart or you have to know a lot and so I try to demystify that um, and just share with students that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the age of 38 and I finally really can sit down and love and enjoy and marinate in a book and get so much out of it about human nature and the human condition in a much different way than I did when I was in school having to read books for our classes. Now I can just pleasure read and so, you know, if we don't have that foundation when we're younger, sometimes we think we're never going to get it. So a lot of the discussions we have are about demystifying that, um, that, um, that myth that like if you weren't brought up learning how to read or, or have coming from a family who is highly literate that you're never going to be that way so I think students are afraid of reading sometimes because a book looking at a book can be overwhelming so I try to look at books with students as this fun curious scientific exploration where we're going to learn all kinds of interesting things that we had no idea were happening in the world and in, in, the, in words and stories so but I think there's a lot of challenges that students have. One thing that I have my students doing right now is they're working in groups, book club groups, and we're reading the Four Agreements. And this entire unit, I'm not asking them to write an essay. Oftentimes they're asked to read something and then write an essay, and that kind of kills the experience of reading for them, in my experience. And so in this semester, we're just doing book clubs where they're just enjoying the book and they're setting goals. What are your goals? And a lot of them 
really want to comprehend what they read. And so we, we talk about strategies for doing that, rereading and annotating and reading out loud and talking with other people about the things that you read and Googling information about the concepts that you're hearing and um, really just going above and beyond just the text itself and understanding how the text relates to the world and to ourselves. So um, I'm going to stop there because I feel like I've talked for a long time. But um, thank you for listening, and I'm really excited to be in this course.